Mr. Bond. Yes. Have you noticed that lately the movies, mm. well, especially the action movies, are getting out of hand? Mm -hmm. There is no more pure evil antagonists. Like, dude, Madam Web. <laughs> This is this isn't even like correlated to Madam Web. I just mentioned Madam Web because it's so funny. Like, I, I, I'm impressed. Like, oh, let's like this intro doesn't even make sense. We're, we're gonna do real and then come back to the topic. Like, I'm impressed how I think the same person who wrote Madam Web wrote Morbius. Uh, yep. How the fuck do you manage to? It's so, Morbin time. It's Morbin time. How the fuck do you make a movie that flops so bad? Only to go around and. Make a movie that flops even worse. Like that. That actually takes skill. That actually takes skill. I'm. I'm super impressed by that. Not even mad. I haven't seen Madam Web or Morbius. I'm impressed though. You haven't seen Morbius? No. no. Like, Morbius is so good that you're actually born with knowledge of Morbius. Right? Like, like I was born with. I. I knew what happens in Morbius. Okay? Like. My favorite scene was he said it's Morbin time and morbed all over the enemies. Too, like when he morbed. Not hold, yeah. not only over the enemies, but over his friends as well. Exactly. Oh, that thing. Like, Same with Man Web. Oh, the scene where she webbed all over the camera. Oh, dude, like I loved when he was like, "It's Morbin time," and just did the, dude, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we both haven't seen Morbius. <laughs> oh, it is. You're saying, um, yeah. <laughs> what the fuck was I saying? <laughs> Something about sh shows are whack nowadays. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Like. Nowadays, when you have the big bad guy, mm -hmm. you can find a reason to like him. Mm -hmm. You can actually find a reason to like the big bad guy. In the buzz, they were like, nah, you know what? I woke up today on the wrong side of bed. I'm gonna be the biggest dick ever. Nothing can redeem me. Mm -hmm. Like, well, I mentioned Bond, like mm -hmm. the James, uh, Mr. James Bond earlier. Mm -hmm. Dude, in his movies, you cannot like the, the bad guys. There's no fucking reason why you should like the bad guys. And I feel like, as much as it's fun having the villain be someone who you can relate to, mm -hmm. it's also very important for movies to have someone you, you physically can't relate unless you're a psychopath or a sociopath. Mm -hmm. It makes for such a great movie, because... Dude, if I wanted to watch something I can see in real life, I'm gonna go outside. <laughs> you know? Like, I agree. As I said, we, we really need the uh, irredeemable evil trope back in movies. Because it's trope as all this time, and I'm pretty sure the most like uh, directors nowadays hate it because, oh, it just isn't realistic. But yeah, that's the point. It's not supposed to be realistic. And I think we could... For some reason, which I, I don't like at all, we've started h hating the um, irredeemable evil trope and replacing it with an ambiguous evil trope. Where, as you said, you can relate to the uh, villains because they're just like me and you. But here's the thing the reason that those kind of movies are sure are fun, but they don't have the same level of epicness, I'd say, as uh, all the movies that had a, rede a irredeemable evil trope. It's because there's no catharsis in that. If you see your yep. realistic interaction, for example, if you see a villain that, okay, I can believe him. That's a realistic uh, position he holds. And uh, it generally wouldn't be agreeable with you know, society's moral standards, but I can agree with him. Once that interaction is done, it's like, okay, on to the next thing. But when you're viewing, for example, an action movie, where it's an undeniable good versus an irredeemable evil, everything feels so much more significant. And the best example of that, I think, is The Lord of the Rings by Peter Jackson. Yeah. Like, uh, that trilogy is... There's a reason it's the most, like, nominated trilogy of all time. Oh. Because it's just such an epic story. And it features just what I'm talking about. An undeniable evil... Uh, no, not an um, undeniable good, what I want to say, but... An ambiguous good and an irredeemable evil. Because even on the good side, there are people who are troubled, challenged. Uh, Theoden, you know, when he's under the influence of uh, Grima, 
is a dark uh, man, evil king. But once Ganon comes out of war, he redeems himself. Boromir, in the start of the movie, in the middle of the story, we think that he, okay, he's after the ring, but at the end he ends up actually saving the fellowship. Boromir did nothing wrong. Exactly. <laughs> And then he has a choice, and he chose to yep. do good. And that story is much more captivating. Nowadays, if Lord of the Rings was made nowadays, they'd be like, oh, the orcs are just misunderstood. They're not evil. They're ju ju the orcs are actually engineers, doctors, good farmers. Nothing wrong will happen if they uh, come over and they actually migrate into Gondor. It's the thing it makes some boring storytelling. Now that you mentioned orcs, mm. My mind went to Warcraft because mm -hmm. fucking nerd. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you've played Warcraft One and Warcraft Two. No. You can play as the orcs mm -hmm. in the campaign, but the campaign was basically mm -hmm. oh orcs, they fought each other, they got fucking manipulated by the devils, mm -hmm. well, not devils, sorry demons, and the burning legion, whatever. Then they got corrupted and they started invading Azeroth mm -hmm. and pillaged, as Nender would say. Mm -hmm. No, I pi I will pillage you all equally. <laughs> you included. Like, they were just evil, dude. Like, mm -hmm. of course, they got manipulated, mm -hmm. but they were still evil. And then Warcraft 3 came along, and they tried to redeem the orcs, like, oh, there's Thrall, blah, blah, blah. Which worked. Mm -hmm. For a while. Nowadays, no one gives a shit about World of Warcraft lore, just because... Oh, you know what? Even the Void Lords, who are like, who are considered evil, who come from the evil force, they're they're basically okay. Like, they're just misunderstood. Oh, the Jailer, he's he's just he's a little bit in his you know misunderstood. Yeah, edgy angsty. face. Yeah, edgy face, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, dude, fuck off. <laughs> like, it makes for boring storytelling. If, it does. If like the only reason someone is good or bad is because of their personal choice. I mean, yeah, that's how life works. <laughs> but I'm not watching this. To basically see a plausible outcome, a plausible uh, experience. I'm watching this to experience an implausible experience. Like, when I'm watching movies with dragons and shit, I don't want to get a, a ethical lesson. I want to see dragons burn down shit, the heroes come and killing those dragons like, yeah, let's go! So you don't like Shrek? You don't like Shrek? A hidden third option. Fucking the dragons. <laughs> exactly. You know what? You know what? Having, you're right. You're having right. donkey dragons. You're right. Fucking dragons is much better than killing dragons. Make love, not war and all that. As Charlie would say, dragons are just misunderstood. They don't eat people. They eat the gold. That's why they sleep on the gold. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> no, but like, I don't know. It's come to the point where I really cannot watch a modern movie mm. just because of this thing like mm. if there is a new movie that's action drama mm. whatever it's always gonna be like you know what oh, this, this is the bad guy but he's not that bad you mm. know it's how you take it like no dude mm -hmm. there was a reason why joker in the past was the most hated character because he literally just took a fucking uh, crowbar and was like haha yoink kid yeah. And now we're like, oh, but I am the Joker. I relate to him, because uh, Joaquin Phoenix, like, I relate to him, society, haha, -ha, like, There's no one society, haha. -ha. Like, no, dude. It's a great movie. Yeah. It is a great movie, but... It's the one you should be inspired by. Yeah, exactly. Like, Same with Fight Club. Great movie, don't get inspired. Actually, don't get inspired. You know what movie you should be inspired by? The Seven Psychopaths. Exactly. <laughs> Seven Psychopaths. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna turn into a psychopath just so my friend can succeed. <laughs> I'm joking. That ain't the best bro story ever. I know what it is. Dude, true, true. But not like. It's come to the point where the only. Actually, I fucking take it back. Mm. I was gonna say the only time where you have the fucking irredeemable evil is in Zombie Apocalypse. Mm -hmm. And then I fucking remember The Walking Dead where people are actually trying to be like, oh no, they're just. Hurt humans, infected humans. They're not bad. They're not zombies. Like, dude. I, I take it back. I fucking take it back. <laughs> Before I even said it, I take it back. <laughs> it's, it's like, that's the last vestige of the irredeemable evil trope. Where it's like, 
Okay, an entity has to be mindless for it to be irredeemably evil. But still, like, it removes so much substance from the irredeemable evil. Like, for example, with the. Um, I'm gonna get back to Tolkien. Now you're gonna mention about Lord of the Rings, I'm gonna actually mention uh, Morgoth before this. Where Morgoth is irredeemably evil. Morgoth than who? Bro. Bro. Irredeemable because of his actions, but he isn't mindless. He has full agency. He knows what he's doing and he's and he loves it. And it's like that's so much more compelling and offers so much more storytelling potential that like, oh, the mind of the zombies, therefore they're evil. Yep. Yep. I mean the only like now that I actually think about it, it's not in, even in zombie movies. It's only in horror movies, like the supernatural horror movies where, oh, it's a demon, it's the devil. Yeah, yeah, of course, that's gonna be fucking irredeemable. But aside from that, there's literally no more villains mm -hmm. who are villains. Mm -hmm. Like, we were previously, we were talking about shows in the 2000s, mm -hmm. and we mentioned Scooby Doo. Mm -hmm. Velma. The new show. Who's the uh, villain? Who's the villain in Velma? The creator. <laughs> the creator. <laughs> That's the villain. <laughs> fair. 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 <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Come on. No, this was checkmate. <laughs> this was checkmate. <laughs> this was literally checkmate. Like, this is like. Okay, Honestly, the social material. That is that is actually irredeemable. Bro, bro, like, that is fucking irredeemable. Bro, well, like <laughs> the only explanation I have for that show's existence is the Satan came on. No, no, no. The script was written in a foreign language. It didn't even bother hiring a translator. They just saw some terms. Uh huh. Scooby Doo. Uh huh. Velma. Daphne. Uh huh. Okay, this is gonna be a show about Scooby Doo. Uh, what does it say? It's pertanto cogenda se pila calurta. We'll wing it. We'll wing it. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> you're right, dude. You're right. I'm, not, I'm done. I'm done. Bro. Bro, oh, so am I. So uh, am I. Well, let us know what you guys think. Do you enjoy that there is literally no more true villains? As always, we'll see you next time. Peace. <laughs>